So, hello everyone, my name is Serafin, and today I'd like to talk about the storage pool checkpoint project, which uh, recently put upstream uh, within the Delphix OS, and the pub is going to be upstream in the more generic OpenZFS community. So, just to give you a quick timeline on the project, um, the project started as a hackathon idea uh, last year, actually. And um, it's done. It's in the Delphi size. And we hope to upstream it because uh, we've received uh, some emails and some interest in this feature. Uh, but I also want to emphasize that uh, we have a lot of other changes that we want to be upstream. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, in order to avoid merge conflicts, you know, these changes build on top of each other. So um, we would, I would like at this point to kind of say that um, while you're here and you know you have the people who work on these projects, um, you know, uh, I basically want to ask for reviewers, uh, for example, device removal, things like that. So help us get there and you know, stream all these awesome work that we have. Um, so back to the Drupal Checkpoint project, I want to give some motivation why do we actually care and how does this help us, uh, specifically in the context of the company that I work with, in Delphix. Um, so, just to give a high level overview, uh, you can think of our product as a VM that we ship to our customers and we have different versions of this product and basically sometimes, depending on the features that customers ask us for, uh, we want to upgrade to a different version of the Delphix OS. So, the upgrade process goes kind of like this. We have uh, uh, new bits that we copy into uh, the VM and then we remove to these new OS bits. And after that, we run a bunch of uh, what we call upgrade scripts. So what these upgrade scripts do is that they manipulate different ZFS data sets, um, their properties, you know, we rename some data sets or we destroy them. Um, and in case that something goes wrong, each upgrade script has a respective rollback script. Uh, so um, what happens is that if something goes wrong, we unroll our changes and we try to figure out, okay, what went wrong? So the problem with the local scripts is that they're deduced to write. You literally have to undo um, whatever you did and you also need to take into account, okay, from which version do we upgrade from where we want to go? So besides being time consuming, it's also very error prone. Um, and the main problem that it boils down to at the very end is that these scripts manipulate data sets, not files. So you could say, oh, why don't you just take a snapshot, you know, try and do something weird with your files, and you know, if something goes wrong, revert back to it. Uh, because it's not just files, we're talking about ZFS structures here, and state within ZFS that changes. So rolling back from that, especially from the user point of view, it's not easy. So Here's where the storage pool checkpoint comes into play. It's basically a pool-wide snapshot. It literally has all the state of the OS, including bit of configuration, dataset properties, any type of dataset structure that we had before. And basically the user can take a checkpoint and later you know, do their changes and then rewind back to it, or if nothing went wrong, can just discard it. Uh, it's exactly like a snapshot from the point of view that taking a checkpoint is O1. Uh, it's almost instantaneous and its space consumption uh, only consists for blocks that we free since we take the checkpoint. Um, so the Delphi use case basically has changed that instead of having all these uh, rollback scripts, we basically take a checkpoint, we run our scripts. If something goes wrong, we rewind back to the previous state else if everything was okay we just discard the checkpoint and state and go. Um, and to give an overview of the high level internals uh, of this, um, I also want to go through some quick background. I assume most of you uh, already know this already or from the talks from yesterday. Uh, but basically uh, the Uber block you can think of like the this master block that refer that references all the state in the pool. Um, and um, we write an Uber block basically every drink TXT, 
uh, as I said yesterday, we had new changes, we had the changes to this, and the last part is when we basically put the new Uber block at the top of the tree. Uh, another thing that's of importance here of what I'm gonna talk later is that uh, every block has a birth time which is equal to the TXT that it was created. So, most of you are probably familiar with that. This is kind of like the process of we wrote a new Uber block and we reference all these new blocks, uh, but we also reference like old blocks. And the blocks that are behind the white ones over here are the ones of some previous state that are probably not referenced anymore. And in general, at some point we reuse these blocks uh, later down the line. So, how are all these relevant to the uh, checkpoint internals, basically, whenever we checkpoint the pool, we grab the Uber block of that current time and we store it somewhere else so it doesn't get overridden in the net upcoming TXTs. Uh, specifically for people who are interested, we write that Uber block uh, somewhere in the most time. Um, and later, if we want to rewind, we basically go back to that place, take that same Uber block and just sub it as it was, like the Uber block of the next TXT. Um, else, if you want to just discard the checkpoint, we just get rid of that setting over um, And the problem here is that, as I mentioned earlier, we have these blocks that are referring to the old state, let's say we checkpointed the Uber block right before this one, that are no longer referenced by the current Uber block, by the current state of the uh, uh, world but they are referenced by the Uber block that we just saved in the mocks. So we need to do something to make sure that these blocks are not free and they stay around in case we want to rewind. See, so because it's not referenced by that same Uber block. So this way checkpointed Uber blocks are not reused. And later if we want to discard all this data that we have, we have that log on this of all these checkpointed blocks that we marked as free but we didn't really. Uh, and we mark them as usual because we don't need the checkpoint anymore. Um, so the usage from the administrator's perspective kind of looks like this. Um, it's a zip command because it's something full wide. So uh, can everyone see that? This is okay. Um, so you can say zip checkpoint and then the name of the pool. Uh, another thing that's very important here is, uh, you know, besides the normal rewind that I have over here, where you do zipool import and then rewind to checkpoint and then the name of your pool, uh, you can also add the read-only um, property, um, and that's good if you're an admin and you know you've moved so much away from the checkpoint that you don't even remember how the state of the world looked at that time. You can kind of go back and see what was the structure back then and be sure, okay, do I want to rewind back to this or not? Um, yeah, another, um, we also have the option to discard the checkpoint and also have simple status and simple list right here um, because I've also, we've also added some fields over there to uh, make sure, you know, that you can say the book has a checkpoint or not and if it does, how much extra space does it actually get? Um, and I have a demo that I can go towards the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, but I would also like to talk about some of the caveats of using the checkpoint. First of all, certain operations uh, are not allowed once the pool is checkpointed. Um, and specific, the specific operations are the ones that have to do with the configuration. Things like removing a device or, or changing the weight of the pool. And the reason is, uh, imagine if we actually allow this operation. So we took the checkpoint and then we removed the device and then we rewind it back to the checkpoint and state. As I mentioned, we are talking about whatever the Uber block references, which includes bit of configuration. So if you were to rewind before that removal, ZFS would think that, oh, that device is still there but it's actually not there, and we wouldn't want to get into this state. Uh, another caveat is uh, when the pool is really struggling and its capacity is almost filled, uh, reservations of specific data sets are unenforceable, uh, meaning that if you, um, if you are at this um, point of the pool where you're running almost around like, let's say, 
some capacity. Um, and whatever is left, you think like, oh, it's probably going to go to that small reservation that I have over there. Um, we basically give priority on the, on the space accumulated by the checkpoint on top of that uh, because it's a more of a heavyweight operation. Um, and the last part is simple scrap may not scrap your checkpoint data, meaning if you have some data that has been freed but are part of the checkpoint and they are no longer referenced by the current state of the pool, the scrapper won't actually traverse this. Um, but uh, this is this is totally possible uh, to do. It just it's not I didn't do it. I didn't have time to do it as part of the main project. Uh, but I'd be more than happy if everyone would like to start it as a hackathon idea. Um, and so yeah, and also as a general rule for any admins using that, I just wanna really be cautious uh, um, when I say that you really need to know exactly what you're reverting to every time. Um, because, you know, once you revert, that's it. Um, and there's some resources, uh, the presentation is up online, um, there's also an introductory blog post, and once on stream, there, there's also an entry in the man pages. So, thank you, and if you, uh, and you can go over it with the demo. So the scenario is that I basically work at a company called Acme and I'm a very absent-minded admin because I just SSH into this, uh, let's say, production host. And uh, there's a pool called Data that has three disks um, and I'm currently within the main directory of this pool and as you can see, there are some dev workspace over here. There is broad with uh, a production database. There's also a QA database there. And basically a, a bunch of other data. Um, um, So there is there are around 400 data sets over there, and basically what I'm gonna do is um, uh, I'm about to start the big update process, and, and I heard about this simple checkpoint feature. So just in case, I'm gonna checkpoint the pool. So I'm going to take a checkpoint of the pool with what I saw earlier. You see, I got the prompt right back. And then 
you know, there is maybe there is a cat on my keyboard or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. And walks over here. You should never trust cats. Um, they destroy your data. So. It's going to take some time because there are like 400 data sets. Uh, but basically, let's see that this happened. We're like, oh, like people all start calling me. I start getting paid. Um, you know, can't, what do you do? Uh, and um, okay, have my prompt back, and I'm like, okay, what happened? So I go back to data and oops. So I go back to data um, and nothing is there. Nothing. Like okay, I, I have no idea what happened. Um, but let's see when was the last time that I took the checkpoint. I go to SQL status data, I see there's a line over here saying like, oh, you actually have a checkpoint that was created some time ago, and it consumes that, that amount of data. Um, also, you can kind of see specifically, you know, for each beta and things like that, there is an extra column right here for how much um, space the checkpoint takes. And basically, all these data are the data that we destroy. Um, so you, that's also good to know, you know, if you are actually, if you're not an absent minded at me, you're just destroying, you know, like, more sensible things at the time, you can kind of say, okay, the checkpoint is taking too much space, you know, you can, you can take a new one later and destroy the old one, so it doesn't take the space. Um, so, okay, uh, I don't need to panic, I know that I had to do my checkpoint, everything should be fine, but just in case, uh, let me see how the state looks like. So I say, okay, just read only. Oops, record. Oops. Um, I want to read one, two. Is it right import? Yeah. Um, import. Yeah. You have to export first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you guys not cool? It's my first demo, okay. Um, yeah, there are probably Dennis has still been. Um, yes, so now I will really put um, So I can go back and see, okay, how does everything look? Oh, and I still have, still have my stuff. Uh, my databases are still there. So, okay, that looks about fine. Let's go back, export the pool, and uh, I really sad, <laughs> obviously. That was a bad idea. Um, this is about the time you had lunch, right? <laughs> George. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, uh, so we saved our data, everything's still there. Um, so yeah, that was the demo that took a lot more than what I expected. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll get back to you, I had a question first. I just uh, you raise your hand. When you rewind to a checkpoint, yeah. does that remove the checkpoint or do you still have the checkpoint? It's actually getting removed. Because we literally take it and we start it as a new one. And because it's the new, Basically, you can because we are talking about moving around Uber blocks, right? So the Uber block that we move and we put in the mobs doesn't have a reference of the mobs with itself inside, right? Uh, so yeah, the, the answer, uh, the question was, by the way, um, once you rewind, um, do you still have the checkpoint? And the answer is no. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the gentleman back there. Yeah. So once once you create yeah. Now, we now have this new and interesting case where a pool has multiple Uber blocks, right? Which well, is, I mean, with potential, multiple potential Uber blocks, right? Which is something okay. we've not had before. Oh, 
Well, what's the question? The, what's the, yeah. the question is, is there any, is there any conceivable way then that you could mount the checkpoint and that you could input the checkpoint read only while simultaneously having the original one imported on its own? Oh, I do. Mm, is I that so you can you can have them both imported with the checkpoint imported read only since it's got a Uber block so you know, Oh, yeah, 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 so this is actually possible, um, and I, and I, um, and it desirable? That, well, it's desirable, we have one use case uh, currently for that, um, and the, I don't know if you're familiar with the ZDB tool, but it's basically a tool that uh, goes around the pool, gathers around the, the bunch of data, does some leak detection and things like that, and what we do in this, uh, specific tool is we do exactly what you said, we import, we have the current state of the pool imported, but we also import um, the checkpointed state of the pool um, at the same time, and we do some cross-reference checking just to make sure that, oh, like did we actually delete something that we didn't need to delete? Um, I mean, but ZDP does some extra, goes the extra mile to make sure that it can do that. If you are a user, you can't actually do this because there are some checks um, that you will hit because, because you will try to import a pool with the same name and the same GUID, uh, so it will not allow you to do that because if you have already imported, you know, if you already have the current state of the pool right. imported. Is this speaking of Hackathon project? I mean, yeah, that, that would be a Hackathon project to like import the read only. Uh, Step. I think it would be super cool, you know, because you won't have to do that extra export just for that. Uh, but it's, we do it already. Uh, question? So, just two quick ones that are interrelated. First, so to do a, to do a scrub, um, you, you would need, I mean, I want to say just, that's not at all the term, to look at the deleted data that in that log that we were discussing mm -hmm. and then reference and maybe do some extra work on the the, the auto healing code to also make sure it can reference that correct? Is that something what it would look like? Would that make any if, okay, so the question was, if we were to make a scrap basically, how would this look like? Is that, is that kind yeah. of the question? And you kind of give the answer like, oh, we can kind of go to that log on this and go through this and make sure that we scrap these parts, right? And yeah, this is, this is basically the high level uh, one of the main high-level ways of going about it. Um, currently, the way that we store the data on, on this on this block, it's a space map. So you only know the size and the run of each of these blocks. Um, and then the scrubbing code works with uh, basically block pointers. So there are many ways of going about solving this, the problem with scrubbing. One of them would be kind of like, okay, import the old state and kind of scrap that as a tree of block pointers. Or, uh, you know, make the trade-off and change the space map to basically like a block pointer list or something like that and go through this. But yeah, that's, that, that would definitely be one way. <laughs> and then, to play devil's advocate, sorry, just to round that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, at that point, you couldn't, if we don't have scrub, we don't have free silver. So if you're in the middle of this and you have a disk die, you're, you can't, you can't re-silver any of the storage, you can't re-silver the storage checkpoint until we make the storage checkpoint scrubbable and in, in its entirety. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's okay. true. Yeah, scrub and receive, yeah, they go together, so. Okay. You have one question? Are you limited to one checkpoint? Uh, yes, yes, we're not, because uh, it's a lot more complicated because we, we literally take the overlock, it's supposed to be a very heavyweight solution. And the question was? Oh, and the question was, do we only have one checkpoint? And the answer is what I just said. If the uh, antimited admin does something illegal, like removes one of the VDEVs while the checkpoint is in effect, do you do anything to mark that checkpoint as it's now invalid, can't go back? So the question is, um, do we do anything to ensure that no removals happen? Would you say that, or basically, if we, both ways. Both you ways. Well, sure, you would ensure it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, do you do anything to prevent the checkpoint from being reported? 
Yes, well, basically removals are not allowed. Once you take the checkpoint, you can't do any removal. Ah, okay, so what error do you get? <laughs> what error? What error? You, said you just said you can't do that I mean, I can. What's the tie-in to the device, uh, the VW removal code? What's the tie to the VW? What's the tie-in? What's the why? Why the requirement to, to the VW? Well, VW it's code? not. It's not. You're talking uh, about the upstream. Oh, You're asking upstream. Right? Yeah, it's for upstreaming basically. Um, okay. uh, so the question was, what's the tie to the device removal code? Right. And there's no specific tie. It just since all of us are here and uh, we have a lot of work that we want to upstream. I just wanted to, you know, like talk about this. Um, specifically, you know, you just saw that. If we try to remove a device after we take a checkpoint, you know, we want to have this error message. So right. basically for me, you know, I, I try to upstream stuff from within Delphix and it, sometimes it can be too um, hard when you deal with all these merge conflicts right. when things don't come in order. So that's what basically what I was going on, on a related, one more question. On a related note, is it also tied to the new SPA load code that Yes. Well, yes. Yes. It does. Yeah. It does. Okay. Yeah. There, there is some extra refactoring yeah. okay. on, on that specific. Okay. Uh, Pavel. That. That's one. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I think. Oh.